Welcome to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. We interview great guests who inspire you to overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. Be sure you visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, just relax as you listen. You can do something else, but be ready to make an important note. And let's get started. The title of this interview is Harmony Power. And my guest is John Mirion. This is going to be something special because let me tell you, well, first of all, John has an incredible biography. And, and I'm not going to get into that because it's so he's so accomplished and been through so much uh, that it will take too long to say it. But it will be on his profile page at the website. And I totally encourage you to read it because it's really an intriguing story. But I want to tell you how John came to come on this podcast. Uh, we have a mutual friend, Gary Humany, who I grew up with. is really I consider him my cousin. And we've done a lot together in video production. And I've heard him mention this name, John Mirion, several times over the years. And I've checked it out before. I'm like, oh, this guy's really cool. He has, first of all, he's an extremely accomplished martial artist. And he's been practicing it probably his whole life. Uh, but he's not just about MA martial arts. This guy is all about PMA, positive mental attitude. And not just for himself. He really expounds it, professes it, and distributes it. <laughs> this guy is not a guy who talks the talk. This is a guy who walks the walk. He has, he's, he, he works with children. Uh, he just, he's done so much uh, in his life that uh, this guy is all about personal development because you can't be this prolific and not really improve, you know, without a, a determined mindset to improve yourself, have a, a very strong self-discipline and have goals for yourself. This guy is, a, is the example of that stuff. Uh, and so I really recommend you go to the, his profile page on the self-help coaching podcast website to get the more of the details uh and with all not all said let me recommend john mirion hello john hey, it's great to meet you what a great pleasure and honor to be on your show thank you i do this which is eastern i also do this which is martial arts i i couple them together and you might oh, definitely resonate with you yes. I do both. <laughs> it's all about intention that's right. For, for those 99% of the audience is listening. Uh, so they can't see what we just did. But we just did, uh, we put our hands together like in prayer. And then we put one hand, one open hand over a fist, yes. uh, which is, is a martial art gesture. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Uh, it's great to be here. It really is. And it's great. That you have such a, a great positive energy. Oh, thank so. you very much. I'm, I'm all about it. You know, I uh, you know, I, I'm a recovering addict. I've been clean and sober over 21 years. And in those preceding years, I'm 56. Uh, really, I was a very negative person. And I did that for a number of reasons. So most of it was out of my control uh, that I thought. Uh, but one of the reasons why I was so negative is that uh, if I if I expected things not to work out this way, I wouldn't be disappointed and didn't have to deal with that feeling of disappointment. And they almost... And they rarely, <laughs> they usually did not work out. It was a lot of mostly self-manifestation. I mean, I did a bunch of stuff, but I was very negative. But when I got into recovery <clears throat> and decided to really change myself, I realized that negativity had to go. And I, and I, ba and basically the way I did that was realize that my, my mind is like a garden and things are always growing in it all by them. The stuff I put in there or stuff that all by itself. And I had to weed the weeds, which were yes. negative thoughts. And I constantly do that. And people say, oh, to me today, oh, you're so positive, Tony. I'm like, well, that's not my nature. Uh, 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 that's deliberately how I've created, recreated myself. Well, that was your evolution, right? So we Absolutely. have to go to these negative uh, points in our life, these challenges, and we choose to stay in that or rise above it. It's a choice. It absolutely is. You know, you know, I'm a personal development coach right now. I'm the, just an entrepreneur, the head of a technological coaching company. So I don't work, <clears throat> work with people one-on-one -on -one anymore. But, you know, by, I'm a practical psychologist by the job itself. And 
people work by patterns. They, they're just, they're in patterns and, and, and they're slave to the patterns until they want to break them. And then it takes a very deliberate intention. You said the magic word to break that pattern and then consistent effort until you've done it. But uh, we, we think that we always have free choice. And in some ways we do, but in other ways we're just a slave to our patterns. So do we accept the patterns or do we want to change them? That's ultimately the free will that we all have in my, from my perspective. What do you, what do you say to that? I agree with that completely. You know, it's um, I do, I do have empathy for those who struggle, who are stuck in whatever pattern they're stuck in, you know, I have friends or family members that are still in some kind of destructive pattern. Right. So I'll listen to them briefly and then I'll let them know if we're going to continue to engage in conversation, we need to change, change the topic because they're still repeating their, Patterns, whether they're in an abusive marriage or whatever they're in, you know, they, they have a choice to check out. And, uh, and, and, you know, checking out of these situations could mean the loss of something else, but they don't realize there's a great gain when you have freedom inside, you know, and the pieces will fall together in ways that they even would ever imagine. But people are not even that mindset. They're so stuck to where they are. They, it's almost like they're mentally imprisoned. And, uh, you know, to come out of that is really a choice. So I don't enable those behaviors. I support with love to a certain extent. And then I have my boundaries with people who are struggling like that. They have to choose that because I myself have gone through things. So it's, in, you know, if I had to break out of it multiple times, that was my choice. You know, people like, come on, John, you, you got to. And when I chose it, I rose up. So that's part of the experience. Without these challenges, there's no human evolution whatsoever. So it's not like, you know, once you get to the next place, then there's something else you got to contend with. You have to really self-observe and go deep inside and say, what do I need to work on now? There's always something to work on. That's the great thing about living this experience and being on this journey. I love what you said about challenges. We need a certain amount of resistance. You can't stand on water. You got to have something to push on or pivot on or something to that's firm. But otherwise, you know, it's like, okay, I have 360 degrees of direction an ultimate choice and go nowhere and choose nothing. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. And you know, it's, I, I feel that the struggle people have is I'm like, if you want to change the situation, you got to remove everything toxic, toxic thinking that your self-talk, toxic people, toxic food, right? So when you remove all these things and you really go through this cleansing and you do it in smaller pieces, you know, sometimes it's like a shock. If you suddenly change your diet, it's a shock. If suddenly you remove relationships that are toxic, these are shocks. They're like traumas, even though they're good for you, but without going through that rebirth, You'll just have more of the same, but it's very exciting on the other side. I remember breaking a relationship that was very toxic, right? And when I went to break it after many, many years, this relationship, the, my partner said to me, uh, you think the grass is greener on the other side? And I said, no, I said, it's a tropical rainforest. I <laughs> left and met someone else and it was just beautiful. And it was a brief experience and that wasn't the real relationship. And then I met someone else who became my wife. So and then I was told in relationships that you have to take the good with the bad. I'm like, no, you don't. It should, it should feel all great. If it doesn't feel all great, get out. You know, that's what it, and, you know, meaning taking the good with the bad. It's like, yeah, we have different, we have bad aspects or aspects that we're working on. But what people fail to realize is that you can have it all, meaning that you could wake up to the, your partner and just be, in a virtual blissful state all the time, where they're your best friend, you enjoy talking to them, you get affection every day, and you're in the same rhythm, and, you, and you're both working together. And it's not a needy relationship, but it's a relationship of genuine mutual respect. And if one person says, hey, I don't want the relationship, the other person will support that because they love you that much that they would be willing to let you go. That's real love. That's a hard place for people to exp expect because people are looking for something to latch on to, hold on to something and, and, and hope that the person never leaves them and they don't plan their lives as individuals so that they can support any change. That's the challenge people have in relationships. Absolutely, I totally concur. You know, uh, to me, when I found in a relationship, especially if there's great proximity or sexual relationship, but not just, you know, it could just be a friendship. 
if there's argument, uh, I mean, there can be argument, but if there, there needs to be a minimum of that. <laughs> All right, you know, and not that people aren't allowed there, you have differing views, that's fine, but you, the mark of a healthy relationship is boundaries and they don't have to be formalized, uh, but they have to be enforced, <laughs> right? They do. Uh, Right, and 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 you can't expect. And if a person crosses your boundary, you can't expect. And and they were, you know, they were ignorant of it. Then you need to you communicate what it is. But if they were just, you know, defying it, there's there's the tell. Uh, yeah. You know, you yeah, go on. I I know, I completely agree with you. You know, here's the thing people don't realize too is that you think that you need to have an argument to have a healthy relationship. Disagree. You think that you need to have a debate. Disagree. I feel that you can actually have a conversation about something you disagree about, right? You don't have to have an argument. You have a conversation. Yes. And, and when somebody's trying to debate, they're trying to control. When somebody's trying to argue, they're trying to control. So it's not about controlling the situation and trying to be right, but it's trying to make it right within the relationship, right? And if, you can't, and if you can't make that right, you agree to disagree. If, you, if a person doesn't want to agree to disagree with you, then get out of the relationship because they just want to be right and control you. And it's a very unhealthy state that you're in and you need to like let go of that. Let the person know, I'm not okay with this anymore. Either we're going to connect this way or I, I'm going to have to, to move on. Like and have that strength to move on. Of course, you got to plan these things out. It's not like easy to, to jump ship sometimes. People right. are, sometimes you're married, you've got a lot of other things at stake. But you know what? I find that, you know, if you really want freedom, you have to have that freedom to really be who you are within a relationship. And if you can't be, you're in somewhat of a prison that can be very, very destructive. And that's why I feel like, you know, little by little, you could set yourself free, set the boundaries within the relationship. Either they change or you move apart. And that's fine. People think there's a shame in divorce. Well, a shame in divorce. The shame in staying in a marriage that's destructive. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's going to be all sorts of challenges and even disappointments in life. Uh, that doesn't mean you need to dwell in it. That doesn't mean it was a failure. Uh, that's life. Life has ups and downs. Life, life is a tragedy, but not just. <laughs> there's lots of joy, too. You know, you get what you focus on. Focus on the tragedy, get a lot of sadness. Focus on the joy, get, get a lot of that. 100%. Wherever you put your attention is what you're going to get all the time. You know, you can call it law of attraction. You know, you, there's all these different terms to what we experience every day. But you experience what you think about every day. So if I say that I'm amazing, then I feel amazing and I'm going to attract amazing experiences, right? Just from that point of view. And science is proving this just from a scientific perspective, how your, your energy level goes up, your vibration goes up. Right. And then the spirituals have their whole insight as to what's actually happening in that experience. But I've had spiritual experiences my whole life that are very real to me and they're not, they're, they're no joke. And uh, so to know that there's the other side, right? So in those, in our relationships, you know, I believe that we're on this spiritual journey and which we've, and it is a map that's been chosen and we're part of choosing that map and we're experiencing all these relationships and they all matter. Every little, every, thing each day matters but the secret really is being in the present like being where you are deeply where you are and then deeper where you are then when you're interacting deep listening and active listening and engaging in those relationships that's where people are just not most of the time they're almost never where they are they're either depressed about the past anxious about the future and not in the conversation even when they eat a meal, they're watching TV. They're not even eating the meal, like focusing on what they're eating. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yes. There's nothing like mindfulness, but it's a wonderful realization for me to, to realize that you and I are from the same tribe. So that that's great. <laughs> and not just because we're Italian. I'm not talking about the Italian thing. I'm yes. talking about the mindset. Right. Uh, and it's uh, really wonderful. Let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll come right back with John Mirion. Great stuff, John. Oh, it's great talking to you. You're really quite a pleasure. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. People start something, then something comes up, or they need a break or even a vacation. And they often never get back on track. 
Perficio is designed to allow all of this. Visit www.perficio.io. That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O, where you can live your life as you learn and make progress toward your life-changing goals. You're listening to the Self-Hope Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza. I'm having a wonderful organic conversation with John Mirion. But now we're going to get, well, I'm, first, before I get into some of the meat, yeah. uh, you just said a couple of key things which really resonated with me. Spiritual experiences and, and spiritual journey. I love that. I'm, you know, I'm a spiritual person. I strive to be spiritual, not as much, I'm not as successful as I'd like, but um, I really believe in spirituality. And, and not only is necessity, uh, but you know, that every, that we're all, we're all spiritual, whether we realize it or not, <laughs> right? We're right. spirits, <laughs> we're, you know, uh, I'm known as Tony Petroza, but you know, that's just the name my parents gave me. <laughs> uh, I'm not really Tony Petroza. I'm, uh, I'm, yes, I'm a human, but, uh, who is this human? Uh, I think there's a lot more to me than this human self. Uh, right. And, you know, I have a, I have a protege and we study um, um, Marcus Aurelius's The Meditations and, uh, and we're making that into a personal development course. And he talks about uh, the soul quite often. And the way, for the purposes of the course, at least, uh, I, uh, we, I, we define that by our top five, top five values. What's our top five values? That we can call the soul. Me being, if courage is one of them, well, when I'm courageous, then I'm connected with my soul. That's my soul manifesting. When I'm less than courageous, no, I'm not. That's that's the way I, I've defined it. What do you think about that? We're going to get into this, meat because it's going to be juicy, I know. <laughs> no, I mean, courage is a defining factor, right? So, you know, there's, there's, I have seven, there's seven uh, precepts or seven words that define my brand of Harmony by Karate, which is my martial arts brand. And there's presence, openness, giving, courage, harmony, power, freedom. So be present and open to give with courage, achieving a harmony that empowers freedom. That's the, that's the theme that through the whole program. So, you know, my, my whole mission with my program really is we teach inclusive and empathic leadership through martial arts. So that's the theme of my brand of Harmony by Karate. That's more important to me than teaching people how to knock out or choke out and all those things don't really have a significance in my world i mean we can do those things but that's just not what i will market or promote i leave that for the mma gym so let them explore that world and show what works and what doesn't work i'm more into the inner workings and how what we learn in martial arts how that transcends to the real world that's more important to me that's the longevity and the healing aspects that really matter the most you know, I started practicing Jeet Kune Do. John and I were talking about this before the before the record button was pressed. Uh, of course, John John is a very accomplished martial artist. Uh, he does karate uh, and probably more than that. But Jeet Kune Do is a form of Kung Fu. J J John's title is Sensei, which is Japanese. My martial arts instructors are called Sifus, which is Chinese. Uh, Jeet Kune Do is the, a derivative of Kung Fu, but, but not just. And he was talking about how not only about his knowledge of it, uh, but his actually connection to it, he knows a guy named Leo Fong, who was, talk about that. Talk about Leo Fong and what, and what you know about sure. JKD. Absolutely. Well, first, there's three influences in my program. There's three cultural influences. First is the Japanese, like you mentioned. Then is the Chinese influence. And then I have the Indian influence. So I have those three cultures immersed into the Harmony by Karate brand. So it's first about being present and, be, and learning the static positions of yoga, the basics of yoga. So the goal is to have all the full splits in the back bend. These are the basics of being able to move your limbs. I'm 57. You said you're 56 early. So this is, I could do all of those things because of the, the, you know, the martial art that I've uh, developed from all my experiences. And then there's the, the Chi Fung. And the Chi Fung is deep breathing, super slow movement, and we're using very light weights, being in your breath and doing like a, it's kind of like a boxing, a kickboxing uh, approach to Tai Chi, but very slow with breath. And I learned that from Master Leo Fang, who was a best friend of Bruce Lee uh, for a very long time. In fact, he's, I would say, 
he's the only true colleague, at least Chinese colleague, where they really were that way. Like a lot of the people Bruce connected to were like his, became more students. Leo, at one point, you know, Bruce would have liked him to run his schools, but never took the opportunity. He just, you know, they were just friends. They would spend, Leo would go to his house, he'd sleep over and they'd spend hours around the clock watching Muhammad Ali fights. You know, when, when, uh, when Bruce had that big fight in Chinatown uh, and he was, he was frustrated with the outcome, he, you know, he won that fight, but it was a, more of a battle than he would have liked. He called Leo up right away. And Leo said, Bruce, you got to have those angles. You can't be doing that straight wing chung. You got to have angles like, like a boxer. So when, when Leo went to Bruce's house, the, the house was set up like a boxing gym, like his living room was like a boxing gym. So, so you know, Leo couldn't believe the, the transition that he made just by one conversation. And uh, so they watched the fights together and they talked about that integration of boxing and Kung Fu, right? Which of course was also how Jeet Kune Do form, but, but Leo didn't want to teach. There was no Jeet Kune Do. Bruce told Leo, encouraged Leo to influence his life in saying, he said, Leo, why are you taking, you know, you're a Taekwondo expert, you're a boxing uh, champion, you know, you're, you do Kung Fu, why don't you just take the basics of it all and, be, you know, make your own thing. So because of Bruce, Leo developed Wei Kun Do, the way of the intercepting fist, and he developed Qi Feng. So of the two systems, I, when I met Leo in 2006, I met him through World Black Belt. I was the ambassador for World Black Belt uh, with Chuck Norris and Bob Wall. So I worked with Bob Wall, who was the actual villain. For those of you who don't know, these are big names in martial arts. <laughs> Go on. So, I, you know, I never met Chuck, but I, but Bob and I would speak extensively. And, and somebody who, his colleague who introduced me was Adam James. Adam James was worked with Bob, uh, working t- together with World Black Belt. And Adam James was the one that introduced me to Leo Fang and that, that whole world of Bruce Lee and Jeet Kune Do. So anyway, so, so Bruce and Leo had a tremendous impact on each other's lives. You know, one influencing the boxing approach, the other one influencing, hey, be yourself. So when I met Leo, I was going through my own transition with my father. My father moved to Florida. I had done the style called Shirinjiru, which was a Japanese system and you know, legitimate, like solid system that was, you know, this karate system was the first brought to Russia. It was uh, the, the, the army of India did the style of fighting, you know, full contact Koshki fighting. These guys were no jokes, like right? they were the real deal. And, uh, you know, I did that for a long time. Like we had no weight divisions when we fought, you know. So when I watch MMA, I'm like, they got weight divisions. We had none, full contact with armor, but it was still, the impact was incredible like if i was getting hit by somebody it was 280 it was it was it was just too much it was like getting hit by a car so i dealt with that and i i fought full contact probably for a good 15 years span and then i was pretty much wow my body was done i had three knee surgeries i'm like i'm out and i was you know and i not only did i end up you know not uh doing that anymore but i ended up leaving the world of shirinjuru and i was grateful for the experience but I wanted to embark more in the healing aspect. So I started to search. And that's when I met Leo Fang. I also met a guy named Bill Wallace, Superfoot Bill Wallace. Um, he's, he's a big one. Well, we're very close to right now. In fact, um, he became my kicking teacher because his he couldn't use one leg and I had three knee surgeries. I, I learned how to master the lead because pivoting with the real leg was just very damaging. I couldn't torque the back leg. So I actually adopted the method and um, I'm actually one of his schools besides having a uh, Leo Fang system. Now Leo passed away recently. I mean, I was uh, you know, 92 years old. He died from COVID. And, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So it was really not, that was only a couple months ago and, you know, it was very sad, but he surprisingly handed me one of his two systems, the Chi Fang system. He gave it to me, made me the, I was the co-founder and now I'm the, the owner of it and you know it wasn't it was kind of a shock to the the you know his world and you know Jeet Kune Do world because those who know Leo Fang that that was like you know John Marion on the east coast like they were they're on the west coast you, but I was you, you have a dojo right in Manhattan yep oh, up in west Manhattan. Side. Up 28, west side? 28 years I was um 
I actually had a, my dojo was actually inside of a place called Reebok Sports Club in New York City. And I was one program, uh, one sensei, one teacher of 200 athletes worldwide that was selected for this very special gym. And it was a gym for the celebrities and the CEOs and, and, and their kids. And I got the deal uh, that was in 1995. I closed the contract with Reebok in the Reebok Sports Club gym. And uh, yes, I ended up being there for 20 years. So I, you know, every time I watch the news, if I see a celebrity, a CEO, or even the presidents, I, I know, you know, I trained Donald Trump's son, a grandson at one, at one point. I trained, you know, uh, Al Gore's grandson. Like, it's just, it's, that was my world. You know, it's like, I can go on and on with the, the people, but I don't want to go name dropping here because what matters is I was teaching the leaders and future leaders. Cause you know, like I said, my program is about inclusive and empathic leadership. You know, I did my best and I still do my best to teach leaders to have empathy and care deeply about the work. Oh, okay. Before we get into this guy, see there's a whole other thing, right? Now we're getting to leadership. <laughs> let's, uh, you know, <laughs> let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll be right back with this really wonderful discussion with John Marion. This is, I'm really loving this, John. Thanks so much. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. When Ben Franklin arrived in Philadelphia, all he had was 10 cents in his pocket. Despite this, he became America's first self-made man. Visit www.perficio.io. That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O to actually have the knowledge and principles of Ben Franklin transferred into yourself. You're listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza, and having a wonderful discussion with John Mirione. You know, before the the, uh, the interview began, I said to John, well, was, you know, the, com the conversation usually goes around 40 minutes or so, you know, and sometimes a little bit more if, it, if it's really extended. But I, I, the writing's on the wall. This could go for hours with John and I because it's such a great organic conversation and it's really fascinating, intriguing stuff organically uh, and peripherally. Uh, so I hope that this doesn't go too long. And that's not a warning to the listener. That's just uh, my validating my opinion on, on our discussion. I think it's really wonderful. I think this is very entertaining, intriguing. And of course, you, you're giving a lot of value. Now, before we get into leadership, which is where I sure. cut you off, and because we'll finish up the part about martial arts, well, as much as we can, because we talked about Bruce Lee and, you know, and, you know, I, I practice martial arts. But I practice like like 99 percent of martial arts for self-defense. That's what real martial arts is for self-defense, not offense, but defense. I have no doubt that you agree with that. Uh, but, you know, one of the things I, I a book that I read uh, when I first started practicing JKD was the Tao of Jake of Jeet Kune Do by Bruce Lee. And it, it's all about spirituality. This we didn't quite finish the spirituality thing. I'm coming back there. Uh and um in spirituality and self-defense and no and having an, this inner and outer awareness. Uh and I'm I'm sure that really plays in, in what you teach, what you profess and and uh and what you exercise. Am I right in that? Yeah, that's, I, I live that. I mean, I, you know, Bruce Lee he was a very deep person, you know, he was a young person, but he's a very flawed, uh, you know, individual, fiery character, but he was also very deep and, right. and he gave a lot to the world. You know, I'd say he's probably the greatest martial arts player of, of our time. Yes. No question about that. Yes. You know, what's going to duplicate that. Um, but I will say this, um, there were other people that, there was another person that impacted my life. Her name is Tao. Portia Lynn. She's the oldest yoga teacher in the world. She passed away two years ago. And we were very, very close friends, uh, deeply close. I was in her book. She was in my book. Ah. And uh, yeah, so the, the yoga piece is a very important part. Yoga is a very big part of people's lives. So, you know, you, you bring that element in, you bring, the, you know, like I said, you have uh, Leo Fong's Chi Fong with Bruce Lee's, that, that whole lineage is powerful. My dad's lineage was amazing because it's the real Japanese lineage. So that really gave me a core starting point, a foundation, right? And then you've got, I mentioned Bill Wallace, um, you know, undefeated world kickboxing champion. That whole, guys like that are the reason why you have, you know, UFC and every other fighting that you have today. 
You know, when I first started practicing Jeet Kune Do, John, I, I loved it. I was fascinated by it. And I started w watching MMA. But I quickly lost interest in that. I don't, I'm, I don't like violence. I really don't like watching people fight. I don't like it. Uh, I definitely want, I love to see someone defend themselves against uh, an offender or a bully. And I'm going to get into your anti-bullying program. Yeah. Uh, let, let that happen in a linear way. Uh, but yeah. that's... Uh, Go on. I want to add something to your remark, but I agree with the violent part, which is, you know, very concerning. Uh, in, in my, when I was at Reebok, I you know, mentioned these celebrities. So, you know, one of the other people I taught was this little boy who his mother was Rosie O'Donnell. And the reason why that boy came into my program was the man kept staring into my space for two weeks. And I was like, you're looking into my dojo at Reebok. I'm like, who's this guy? So I finally went out. I'm like, you've been here for two weeks. He's, Can I help you? I'm looking for a school. I said, <laughs> okay. And then he says, my name is Marcos. His name is Marcos Martinez. I get to know the guy. He's undefeated, never lost a UFC match. He <laughs> was in the Venezuelan war for 12 years at special forces, wow. didn't die. Um, and, you know, and a bodyguard for not just Rose, he was, he was the top bodyguard for Stallone, the top bodyguard for Madonna. Wow, and, and he was observing and evaluating your dojo. Picking me as the teacher for this boy, right? So then, then I'm like, okay, so that's the exciting thing. I've got this child in my school. And this is wonderful. And he's like, I want to fight with you. I said, no, I don't want to fight with you. I said, I want to spar with you. We're not going to fight. We're not going to, you and I are, we're not going on the mat. No, I don't fight somebody who's a killer. who never lost a UFC match. I, <laughs> you and I, we're in different leagues. I'm a teacher. I'm just trying to, you know, live my life. You know, I did full contact. I had a lot of street fights, but I'm not you. No, 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 Sensei John. We just, I just need a friend. I want to spar with you. So we did that. The first time we sparred, uh, you know, he, he, he goes to reach out for me and I throw him and he rolls. He gets up. He goes, oh, you do judo. I said, oh, a little bit. Yeah, I, I grapple. I never threw the guy ever again. Just so <laughs> you know. And he was... He, he never lost the UFC match. He actually beat um, one of the Gracies, and uh, he subdued out. For those that don't know, Gracies are like the biggest rock stars in, uh, um, what is it? Jiu-Jitsu. In Jiu-Jitsu. They're, they're, they're legend. Let's just yeah. call it out like it is. And, yeah. you know, Marcus had a good day. He beat a Gracie. That doesn't make him better than anybody. You know, he's very humble about that. Because I... Never lost doesn't mean that somebody can't beat me. I just haven't run into that person at that time. He's very humble about that. So the Gracies are, you know, and I would never get on the ground with a Gracie, a Gracie guy because that's what they do all day. You can't really have a role with this. They just grapple, 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 grapple. Yeah, just, you know, just mind your own business and stay out of trouble. But anyway, back, back to the story. So Marcos, talk about nonviolence. When he fought in the UFC, his mastery was he never drew blood from his opponent. He was afraid his mother would see him on TV and when he was being embarrassed. He was a Christian. I was like, are you guys kidding me? What? So I learned that choke from him, which had saved me a few times. And uh, I helped him with his PTS from taking all those lives. I helped him through meditations and, and you know, these positive interactions. He claims his PTS is gone because wow. of, of, of and so it was a beautiful story. So He's the other influence that I always respect the MMA and UFC when they're nonviolent. I'm not into the trash talking, standing on the top of the cage and screaming while the guy's in a pool of blood. I'm into the George St. Pierre, the Leota Machida, the real professional athletes who, who are class acts, not the thugs, not the violent people who are screaming and acting like knuckleheads. I'm not into that. So just so anybody view is out there. That's my, my take on it. My, my Sifu... Uh, Sergey Kobzhinov, uh, he's similar to you. You know, he's a fantastic, you know, black belt in JKD. Uh, but he also practices the healing arts uh, as well. You know, and so I and I love both, and I get both from him. And that's where it's it. That's where it's at. You know, it's the ability to defend oneself as well as the ability not just to heal oneself, but to help another heal. I mean, that <laughs> if that's not uh, a self realization. Uh, it's definitely a big side of it. <laughs> yeah. And learning enough skill set to, to feel good for life, whatever you do, whatever martial art, and learning enough to at least try to stop someone from being violent towards you and standing up to that is, is really important. 
doesn't mean you're going to survive. It's standing up because you don't know what you're dealing with. So when people are trying to be invincible, I got to learn this martial, I got to find the best martial. I'm like, you know what? You need a few basic tools to stand and to go on the ground and you make them as best you can. And the rest, leave it alone because the better you, if you want to go down that road, you're going to be hurting yourself. And you, then you can't walk and talk when you're older. It makes no sense. So I tell that for anyone who's looking in martial arts, focus on longevity and the healing. That's where it's at. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I've got, I've got, I, I'm, you know, I, I strive to be healthier and I have goals about longevity, but I don't want to, I don't want to get sidetracked by that. Uh, sure. cause we're going to come back. Uh, I'm going to take a break. Then we're going to get into some of the meat about harmony by karate and harmony power. But that's after we come back right after this uh, word from our sponsor. Great stuff, John. Oh, thank you. This episode of self-help coaching is brought to you by Perphysio. What if there was a self-improvement program truly personalized to you, that knew and cared for you deeply, that whatever was going on in your life adapted for you perpetually? Visit www.perphysio.io. That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O.io, where you can start a program that will always suit you considering all the pressures and nuances of your life. You're listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza, and John Mirion. Fantastic discussion, multifaceted. Uh, we talked about uh, karate at the seven pillars. Was that seven pillars, was it? It's seven principles. Seven would... principles. Now, now, was, was that harmony by karate or is... Harmony, that's harmony by karate. It's something okay. that... I Elab came up with, right. Elaborate. What is Harmony by Karate? Well, Harmony by Karate basically is a leadership development program. It's about inclusive and empathic leadership. I've, so I use martial arts as a modality to do that. And like I mentioned, I integrate the other experiences that I had into that creation, uh, using utilizing movement. And how the person processes that movement is how they will process all that inner development and it's a beautiful experience that way when you learn it that way, just dealing with your own body and then how you apply that with your partner, your dojo mate, that's how you develop that skill set. But how people approach movement is how they approach their whole life. Now, uh, you have a pro, this is a program, right? Harmony by Karate. Now, I, I created a virtual coaching program with Proficio, which is awesome because, because, you know, it's about the mind and learning personal development, things that you want to learn to to, to accomplish goals uh but there's no getting around a martial arts program you got to get on that mat you've got to move that body you know you have uh, the form which has to be you know you it has to be executed and the better executed the better the outcome uh is that correct yes well you need like i see in my brand you need the stillness of yoga the super slow movement of chi fang and the deep breathing and the speed of let's say kickboxing or karate, that speed of movement, that but it has to be done with a flow and, every, and everything's a whipping motion. Nothing should be jarring in the body. That's the, the whole technical aspect of what we're doing. So, and then, like I said, then there's the, the whole life, how this transcends into your whole life. How, how has your program impacted the world? Well, because I trained the, the leaders, many of the leaders uh, in, in New York City and their children, um, it's had an astounding impact from that. My brand is, was rated in Asia as the num as in the top seven martial arts schools in the United States. That was a recent rating done in Thailand. Wow. Did re some researcher did that. And then, you know, what I ended up doing with, um, with my brand was expanding it, you know, it was 2010 and I was watching the news and they had a bullying incident on the news constantly, kind of like they have the mass shooting thing now, everything's mass shooting. Yeah. So that was the craze. And so at that time I said to my partner who I was with, my, my spouse, I said, look, I can't watch this and do nothing. And she said, what do you intend to do? I said, I'm gonna get on a plane and sponsor myself and travel the country. So I went to Chicago. So I went to Chicago uh, and I, Went to this school called the Nettles Horse School, and I, when I went into the, went into the school, I said to them, I told them who I was, and you know this is all planned, and they put the the most challenging kids, the bullies, in a room. I said, I need all the worst kids you have in this room. 
I didn't care what their, you know, their records were or how dangerous they were. I said, put it, bring them in the room, please. So about, about eight kids sat down and the assistant principal comes in and they start bullying. They were making fun of me. So I postured up calmly and I said, I don't want to hear another word out of any one of you. I'm not the one. So sit down, be quiet. And uh, they were all quiet. It was shockingly quiet. The, prince, the vice principal was kind of surprised at how I, I did that with just one sentence. But yeah, I don't, I don't have that fear of these bullies. I dealt with them growing up and I, did, I had a lot of street fights. I grew up in Brooklyn and Long Island, it was constant fights. So it's like, I don't really care what, it's all their insecurity. By the time I was done, they would start to engage in conversation, asking me about me. Before you know it, they were helping me set up an assembly for the big, the big performance and show that I do that I, when I traveled. I went to 17 cities. And at that time, it was the Harmony by Karate, you know, Stop Bullying campaign. That's what it was called at the time. And it was launched on Oprah radio. Uh, so Oprah's radio show supported it. And that's, that was the beginning. Now, for, is, is this Harmony Power or the beginning of Harmony Power? Or is this something else? Harmony, Harmony Power became a legal nonprofit entity as a charity arm of Harmony by Karate. But initially, I had to sponsor myself. I had to go out there and see what was going on. Like before I could even form an entity that was going to deal with it. And I'm a very solution driven person. I'm not just going to keep going out to looking at issues. I went out there and I had some, you know, I would teach people how to yell stop and raise their hand and all these reactive ideas that they use, you know, you see it all the time. Someone wants to bully you, this is what you do. But there was more of the same. It was like, I had seen so much after 17 trips around the country. I was even like in areas where the bloods and the crypts were, you go into these dangerous neighborhoods and and what helped me too is that I, I break danced. So I, I was a professional dancer in the United States Air Force. I was an elite uh, performance group that, that you competed in multiple levels and you traveled the country. It was like the, uh, you know, it, it was just an incredible experience. There's a whole story with that. I, I don't know if we have enough time to tell you the whole no, story. No, we don't. Go with that. Go, 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 go. Get that story. Yeah. Go to his bio. You know what we're gonna do, John? We're gonna we'll have another interview. Uh okay. maybe it'll be a quick one on social media, but yeah. th there's definitely more in store for us, that's for sure. Because you got so much great stuff I want to get out. But continue on the vein about uh the, so, is this harmony power or is this something else? We're gonna get to harmony power. We're still in the harmony bike right stop bullying campaign. Okay. So I would use that experience. I you know, I did the I was in the Air Force Entertainer, then I danced at the Apollo Theater four times. I was one of the first white performers to get on a stage and, and, and actually the, after getting booed off multiple times, they did have one standing ovation. So I won the crowd where they just rose up and they just kind of like, they gave up. They're like, all right, you're great. I love you. So I had that experience. So it's another story. And then I was the choreographer with Club MTV. I did 72 episodes with downtown Julie Brown. This is like, this is the 1980s all around. So Having that experience and coming into modern times and going to these bad areas where they, first you see, they, okay, they, I, they say I could fight. Okay, cool. Well, they can pull a trigger and just end my life. So they, they don't really care. I'm like, whatever. But when they saw me dance, man, that's, that's what they had to see. And then they would challenge me and then we would battle. And I'd hold my own. So they were like, all right. And then they would line up and want my autograph. Like I was some famous guy. And I was like, I'm just... I'm just trying to get to know the world and see what's going on. I'm going to go into your world and feel what you're feeling. So it was a beautiful experience. So when it came out of it. You're, you're a true communicator. It's what you are. Thank you. Thank you. That's fantastic. So I, went, I went to areas where never even saw a white person. I went in the, in the South, like you go to like, you know, North Carolina uh, and you shake hands with a little black kid and they never shook, they never even touched the person who was white. So I made every kid touch my hand. So anyway, so that, after doing that experience, I ended up on, you know, I was on all the networks, all the media networks you could think of, Fox, CNN, every, you know, people would challenge me and I was, it was beautiful, right? So I go on this roller coaster ride. In fact, when I was on CNN, I was on the, the biggest case of bullying in the United States is this girl, Alicia Gingerella. She gets beat up by her three friends over a boy, of course, if I know a boy, but they pummeled her head knowing she had brain surgery two weeks prior. 
Those kids were in all kinds of legal trouble. You know, this show comes on, it ends up on Dr. Phil, and it's on CNN. So there I go in, right? So you got a, an angry mother, you've got a person trying to sell a book. This is how this is how our media is. Everybody's like, it's like a hodgepodge, right? Mm -hmm. And there I was. And my take was like, we got two problems. We got the victim, we got three bullies. They're victims too. They don't just go beat up a girl because they don't have problems. So we we have to look at that. So I was the only one that was making any sense. They let the mother go off the air. They let the book writer leave. And there I was just engaging with the host until it was done. Finished that. They were like, you're great. We have to have you back on TV. I'm like, what is this, like a circus in my mind? I'm like, what? So I go home and I'm going, I told my, it was my ex-wife. I said, I got to go back. I got to do something. I said, this is, this is just nonsense that, you know, it's just nobody cares, really. And that's what I felt. Excuse, excuse my dogs. That's okay. So I ended up... I'm a huge dog guy, even though I have a bunch of cats right now. They're all rescues. Yeah, no, they, they can get loud here, but they're great. They're great pets. Yeah, so I end up going back to this person's school, this girl's school, because I wanted to go in that community. I wanted to go do it. Two, I did two assemblies. Who shows up is like, you know, ABC shows up. You know, the media shows up. And, you know, it's just more about them getting footage and, and making money. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So I said to this girl, I said, listen, I said, if you want to feel better about what happened to you, I said, it's best that you speak out to the media and empower other kids to stand up to whatever they're going through. And she did that. And unfortunately, months later, this child end up, end up trying to take her life. So I felt like all right, I went and did this and I had all this media. I still, I could not stop the inevitable, right? It was frustrating for me. And what I ended up doing is I ended up on other media. Then I ended up on Deepak Chopra. We did a TV show together on, it was, it was called One World. And he, the topic was bullying. And I did that show with him. I was a special guest and it was a beautiful thing. And it went so well that his brother, Sanjeev, who was the, the uh, head dean for Harvard Medical School, he said, he said to Deepak, he said, I love what he just said. And Deepak's like nodded his head. So Sanjeev, he decided to become my friend. And, uh, and then, then it was um, AIG. I was training the top person from AIG. They were all upset with the, the whole Wall Street movement. They wanted to change the world. They said, look, let's form a foundation. And uh, the name came up, Harmony Power stand up to bullying and stand for human equality. That's the mission. And that's how that happened. So, you know, and, you know, Deepak Chopra was that, that was like kind of like the, the international uh, recognition because it still airs internationally. Um, and then what ended up happening is, so I ended up thrusted into these, um, a lot of these Indian American circles, parties and meeting the ambassador and because there's Deepak Chopra, right? So I ended up and I said, I went on that ride. And then I ended up meeting a uh, very powerful assemblywoman in New Jersey, who actually is the, probably one of the most powerful. She wanted to enforce the gun control law in New Jersey. And we were in a debate. And I said to her, these kids don't care about your gun control law. I said, please understand, they don't live in your reality. When they pull the trigger, they don't have any feeling. You know, when you go home family, you go up to a nice house, nice family. They don't have that. Mm -hmm. I said, I think what you're doing is nonsense and a big waste of tax dollars. I really upset her. So she looked at me, she says, what do you intend to do? I said, Harmony Power. So what do you mean, Harmony? What I, so I had come up with this idea that, you know, in schools, when I traveled, the only thing they had in place with bullying was negative reinforcement, right? So when you do something wrong, they've got everything in place. Oh yeah, they're going to crucify you every which way. Oh, you're going to get suspended. You're going to get expelled. You may even go to jail. This, they've, they've had that since the Industrial Revolution. Nothing's changed. But they had no mandate for positive reinforcement. So I started to recognize kids for the good they're doing when I would travel and give out these Harmony Power Awards a certificate. So I got so outraged. I said, I need this as a mandate. For me to keep going to schools in your community, you need the mandate. So Elizabeth, New Jersey, 28,000 kids, they became the first mandated program. So it's the first mandated anti-bullying program in U.S. history. And it was actually announced on ABC television. 
ABC announced it. I was on it and it was a big deal. And that was three years ago. And now as we're speaking, this is a great time we're, we're even doing this segment, only this past week, right? I'm getting recognized for the presidential award. I'm going to Las Vegas and I'm gonna get a presidential award for community service, what I did in Elizabeth. That's exciting. But what's more exciting is what you do with these things, right? When you get recognized. So now I'm meeting with the, the head of anti-bullying for the whole city of Las Vegas, 130,000 kids, because I wanna roll Harmony Power out in the whole city. I'm meeting with them when I go out to get my award. And I was initially going out for Bill Wallace because Bill Wallace is my friend who is my kicking teacher and mentor. John, um, let, let me, let's take a pause for a moment. Yeah. I, I, we're going to take our, uh, our final com our commercial break because this yeah. is great stuff. And before you get going with Bill Wallace and the Vegas thing, let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll yes. come right back and we'll come. Put a, we, it may not be our final segment because you and I can talk about a lot of stuff. And, and I, as long as it's interesting to the audience, we'll keep going. Uh, so yes. let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll come right back with John Muriel. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. Do you know why most wealthy people are that way? It's because they think like wealthy people, and a fool and his money are soon parted. Visit www.perficio.io. That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O, where you can actually transfer the wealth mentality into your own brain, and you will think wealth. listening to the self-help coaching podcast with me your host tony petroza and having an incredible organic and conversation with john Marion. and i, I mean we're, i hardly even got to my questions quite frankly it's just our, our, the conversation has been so organic and multifaceted but he's talking about right now uh the harmony power he's out in vegas bill wallace uh you want to finish up that that vegas story yeah. So what ended up happening is I, you know, I get a call, you know, when I go out to Vegas, you know, Bill is being honored. I want to go support that because I, you know, Bill and I are quite close and I've learned a lot from him. He's, you know, terrific person. In fact, I gave him a Harmony Power Award for all he's done. We had a, 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 a event in my space that we did that. So I'm like, absolutely. I mean, you know, the guy's a tremendous um, icon has made a significant impact on martial arts and in flexibility training, kicking, he's phenomenal. So I, I planned the trip. So I ended up talking to the producer of the event, who's a, a major player in the in the martial arts world. And you know, we he was asking me about my background, and I was telling him he was just intrigued with the the whole harmony power. You know, the first mandated anti, you know, that whole thing. He was he said, you know, I, I want to award you. I says why? He says the presidential award. Well, how does that work? He says, well, all this paperwork is going to Washington. They have to approve it. I can't approve it for you. So that's what happened. And that's, so I ended up going out for, to see Bill and then get something at the same time. And uh, so I ended up reaching out because, you know, I, I was looking at, I was calling places around the country about bringing Harmony Power to different cities. And I realized Vegas had the biggest mass shooting. I said, you know, let me reach out to their top person. I reached out to the superintendent. And that led to the anti-bullying coordinator. And the, the anti-bullying coordinators of each city are the, really the ones that, they're the ones that move those mountains. Superintendents, they don't really do much. They just say yes or no. You can do it or not do it. And they expect it to be done. So we had one conversation a week ago for about 10 minutes. And this guy was just so excited. He's like, this is exactly what the city needs. It's Harmony Power. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, every city needs it. I mean, wake up people. If, if, you're, if schools have been focused on negative reinforcement for, you know, 70 years, and we're wondering why there's mass shootings and bullying, you can... You How can is it taught? How is Harmony Power taught or, or demonstrated? Do you have instructors? Is there a program? No, there's nothing to teach. It's, it's telling the teachers to use existing curriculum, use kids' existing gifts and talents, let them demonstrate and show you who they are. And recognize it with a Harmony Power certificate, piece of paper with a beautiful okay. logo, and they get the award, and it's noted in the report card. So it's like they get recognized for who they are and what they can do, and demonstrate that to the school community. That's what it's about. So I'd like for an example, I had these two girls. They were having bloody fist fights in a very bad neighborhood, and their parents are like, you know, AIDS victims. They come from a hard background of illness and poverty, and they were just 
punching each other, like blood. And Prince was, they know what to do, right? Harmony Power comes in. These two girls were dancing on stage as a way of expressing their talents to their community. They get the award, they became best of friends. Wow, that's great. You know, you and I are very similar. I, you know, I've created Proficio, which I, I really believe that Proficio is, is the world's first automated true self-help coach. Uh, it helps people get everything they want out of a self-help course, a personal development course. And I believe that personal empowerment is the true road of personal evolution and special evolution. When a person brings forth their potential and becomes satisfied and happy with their results in their life, then, then you get a very different atmosphere and not just in their own, how they feel about themselves, but what they do, which creates more and more prosperity. Then that's Proficio helps, you know, everyone get the, what other experts teach. It's, that's it's, great. It's, that's not, great. it's What's that? That's awesome. It's not an expert in itself. It helps yeah. you get what other experts teach. You do the same thing in your own way. You you do martial arts. You teach kids about you know getting rid of their negativity, striving for positivity, finding their self esteem, finding their communication abilities. Uh, so we're we're we're, we're and I said at the outset that we're from the same tribe. I didn't realize how accurate that was. We really are very similar doing things, and that and this is the beauty about people is that. We're individuals. We have a lot of commonality and we have different strengths and weaknesses and you really bring yours forth. And that's what I'm striving to do. I, I really, I'm so impressed by you and it's great stuff. And I, I love what you're doing. Now you talked about a lot of this impact, but there, there are other significant impacts that you can talk about and how it's affected children's lives, Harmony Power. Um, I would say that it, you know, when I, we had this interview the other day, we, all, we, we had 10, children um, and it was it took me three years just to get an approval from a city to get video footage of these children of them speaking out right so I could speak out and say it's great it's the best thing ever I, we went to get the voices of the children and it was it was so powerful because they articulated the experience almost like uh, the, the biggest question was if they we, okay it's a citywide mandate first one in the country if this became a national mandate, this was the question asked to the children, do you think it would have a, a small impact or a big impact on bullying and mass shootings? And they were like, big impact. And then they'll say things like big impact taking small steps is like when kids get recognized for the good they're doing, they wanna do more good. And other people see them doing good, then they wanna do good. And that becomes the way that everyone wants to be. Like they would explain it in a variety of ways of, well, of course, that that's how it should be. That should be the way the culture is. And that's why it needs to become that. And that's why it is becoming that as we're speaking. But these kids articulated so beautifully how in the, the awards impacted their lives. And, you know, it's just, um, there's just no words. And it's just like, I'm like, why are we spending so much money and time on negative reinforcement when it doesn't work? And it costs nothing for positive reinforcement. Piece of paper, little time that's already in your classroom schedule that you get paid to do. That's the whole idea. Taking what they're already doing or have done or they could do and recognizing it in a profound way and doing it in mass volume. That's not about like just 10 kids. It's about like 100 kids per school, right? So if in the school system you have the, the people who get recognized are the, the athletes, the ones that are really smart. Well, what about the 70%, 80%? What, what, what happened? So if you think over a course of 70 years and an economy that is declining and there's, and there's more violence and you have the social media, well, of course you're going to have, of course you're going to have uh, a lot of change. Right. You know, like, right. and such. So you have to change something. So if you say, okay, we're going to recognize the good in kids and teach them to believe in themselves so that they love themselves and they won't hurt each other because it makes sense. And it doesn't cost This is a anything. program I can really get behind. I'll tell you what, John, you know, we just meet, but we're going to talk more about how I can help get your program out there. Cause I, I this is, I'm going to study it more, but it's, it's something I, I really would be willing to promote, uh, you know, uh, at no charge, you know, as, as much as I can, you know, in the context of what I do. So amazing. Do we definitely be talking about that, but let, let's, let's, uh, wind up the, our conversation we'll, we'll definitely be having another one sure. whether it be on social media 
or another interview. But this will be my final question of this one. Uh, what is your ultimate life goal? Harvey power over the world because the world needs it. And it, and it truly will be the thing that I believe could save the planet with in, in a, every which way. Because once people love who they are, like love themselves through a program that is so simple, doesn't cost any, any society, it would cost them zero if they just made that the way. Um, then you, global warming, all these things would work themselves out. When people love who they are, they're not greedy. They care about the environment. They care about each other. But when you don't have the self-love, you have every other issue that we see and deal with every day. Absolutely. They don't realize the answer is like right in front of them and they're looking elsewhere. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I'm not going to mention it again because it'd be ad nauseum, but uh, you know, uh, because we're of our, really of our market similarities, but uh, Proficio is going to create a success revolution by uh, having a person really get the best out of themselves. Uh, and when they do that, then there'll be a, a different world. Not only will they feel different about themselves, but they're going to make different, make greater things in the world. And and you, we're doing the same sort of thing. You're more focused on children. I'm more focused on adults. But we're doing, and which is great because ch guess what? Children become adults. Screwed up kids get to be screwed up adults. So it's guess it's best to get them at the younger age. Uh, uh, so this we 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 got a lot of commonality. I got the feeling this is the beginning of as as Bogart said the beginning of a wonderful friendship wonderful relationship great yes. stuff you have been a remarkable and wonderful guest john uh do you have any final remarks for the audience um i think you're a wonderful amazing person yourself thank you beautiful vibrant energy and uh i think we're going to see a lot of you in the world with what you're doing because it's that beautiful energy that people are really wanting they, they it's like it's you're a, rare pe you're a rare person. I deal with people all the time and I've been through many interviews and you're a very rare person. So I feel that because of who you are, you, you're going to continue to impact the world through your coaching and what you're doing. So I think people need to, you know, really seize the opportunities with you and whatever, whatever you're putting out there, it's going to make them feel better because your intentions are good. If they're pure, I can feel that. That's very kind of you, and I appreciate that very much. And I understand that you also have a, a special offer for the audience. Uh, this uh, this is a really great, because John told me about this before, and I haven't had a guest make this kind of offer, so I'm really eager to have him make this announcement. Yes, I'm, I'm offering a Harmony Power Award, one award, for somebody in the community that deserves that award. Now, the mission is stand up to bullying and stand for human equality. So someone who really is a living example of harmony and, and they're demonstrating through all the things they're doing. That's what I'm looking for. And it will honor you. We'll put you on my broadcast. I have a Harmony Power broadcast that I do. And we'll talk about what you did, you know, what adversity you dealt with, how you used that adversity and how you helped, and, you know, to overcome. And I'm sorry, let me reword this. How you overcame your adversity and how you help others to do the same and how you promote harmony in the world. That's what this award's really about when you get it, when I do it on my show. And when kids do it, it could be them doing artwork or dancing. So it could be a whole lot of things with kids. But I'm looking for somebody who's really made it, making a difference that's significant in order to have them on my show. That's an awesome offer. So you hear that audience? If you know, so, know someone or of someone who's outstanding or extraordinary, uh, get, and you think that they should be recognized, Get a hold of John. And, and speaking of getting a hold of John, how do people get a hold of you, John, or find out about find out about you and your programs? They can go to harmonybykarate.com if they're interested in, in our school in Manhattan, the Upper West Side. I'm also on Zoom. I'm all over the world teaching martial arts, by the way. And I've been very busy with that. Um, the other, and then with Harmony Power, they can donate. They go right to the website and donate. They could participate. They could recommend people for awards they could talk to their local anti-bullying coordinator and have them call me and we'll i'll do a rollout and it'll cost the city nothing so there's no excuses anymore they can't say money is the issue there's no issue the issue is people doing what they're supposed to do so uh, on two avenues i can I, I can help the world so yeah great and, and yeah, uh, repeat those websites please harmonybykarate.com harmonypowernow.org. Great. That's my two websites. Great. Just the, you want to give an email address or just the websites? Yeah, they, the email would be um, harmony, 
without the BY, Harmony, karate at gmail.com for the martial art. And then Harmony Power Now at gmail.com. John, you have been a wonderful guest. And I mean that with what I said with the utmost sincerity. I, we have such commonality and, yeah. and we have two target demographics, you children, uh, of course, adults do your do your martial arts. Yes. Uh, but me, me, the the self the self help market. Uh, but uh, the, the what we do is, are basically the same, uh, at least in result. Um, I I can I can I can prefer, I can declare that what's that? I just wanted to add one thing with adults. I I have I always had adults. I actually been a key keynote speaker. That's the other career I've had. Ah. Uh, Condé Nast Publications. I was the keynote speaker for GE for 72 countries and, you know, Accenture, I was the keynote speaker. So uh, that's a, another thing I do. So I, I do heavily deal with the leaders of the world and the most powerful players I've, I've had. And uh, some of them, you know, they, I work with them. Some of them are willing to change and, you know, transform. Others not, some in between. Um, but they're not all these greedy, nasty people that they talk about. There's a few greedy ones that make it hard for everyone. There's some people out there that are good people trying to make a difference too with their money. So I just want to clarify that is a lot of people judge the 1%. The 1%, there's a lot more people don't realize what they go through to try to help. And it's the few that make it very challenging for everybody. Wow, what an awesome skill set and resume you have, man. That's great, man. That's That's the way to be, man. I mean... You know, we all have potential. Every single person has potential. You know, the real challenge of life is bringing that potential forth. And it seems to me you're very cognizant of that and you've been very deliberate about that. And uh, I love that, man. I love Thank what you're about. Thank, I, I, I can, I'm declaring that you and I are going to be doing stuff together. Uh, it's done. Now it's I'm declaring done. it right here. See, John, I'm putting, declaring it on my own show. So... Um, I, I got no, I got no wriggle room. <laughs> uh, so thank you. thank you very much, John. I really appreciate you being a guest and, and getting to know you. And uh, this is just the beginning, like I said. And remember, everyone, we're all responsible for ourselves and we can all use a little help. And with that, I'm Tony Petroza. Thank you, John Marone, for being on here. We'll see you thank next you so time much. on the Self Help yes. Coaching Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. Remember to visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Self-Help Coaching Podcast.